A warm good evening all. Welcome to yet another episode of My School My Pride. In this series, we are aiming to showcase the journey of young intellectuals and outstanding students who have achieved something beyond their studies to pursue their passion and brought pride and prominence to their school with the expert guidance from their teachers. So the star of today's episode are Madhumadi Anand, Vaisag Ajit, Sanjula Sreguma from Ambita Vidyalayam Pudyaka. Kerala to share their experience on how they developed a structural principle called tenskriti, a process to package delicate playloads that could be airdropped without damage in disaster relief scenarios, which has won two US patents along with their mentor, Gayatri Manikuti, who currently serves as the assistant professor at Amachi Lab, Amritapuri. So I welcome all of you to today's episode. So my first question is to Madhu. Hi, Madhu. Hi. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your invention and what is a uh, trend security? So a trend security is a very simple structure. It's made up of exactly three components, struts, cords, and padding. Well, when I say struts, I refer to the rigid rods. You can see here the rigid bamboo rods, which form the backbone of the structure. Cords refer to the threads. Here are the black threads that connect the struts into a neatly spherical structure. The cords are under tension, whereas uh, the struts are under compression. And they hold the struts and therefore the entire structure in a dynamic equilibrium. The, rigid, the rigidity of the structure is what allows it to absorb shock upon impact. A payload is usually suspended from the center uh, and it has to be done in such a way that it doesn't touch the struts. Um, it's typically surrounded by a layer of padding. Uh, in this case, we have used coir uh, as this maintains the temperature of the payload, in this case, the medicines, which are quite cold, and also to prevent it from falling out of the tensor gradient. Um, upon impact with the ground, the impact momentum is dissipated throughout the structure, and this protects the payload from breaking. So, yeah, how did you come up with this idea of tenskriti? So, the idea of using an eco-friendly tenskriti structure for our payload delivery began in a, in a strange place. Uh, uh, with actually a completely different concept in mind. It was as an entry for a science competition called the Raman Young Science Innovator Award or the RYSI. I made my first tensegrity there while looking at a NASA Super Bowl as my inspiration. I wanted to make a ball shaped robot that can roll just like how this ball can roll across terrains of different planets. I saw some YouTube videos online and was able to make a structure using drinking straws and rubber bands. However, this one, the one I built didn't really work as I had yet to learn a lot about the physics, which allows a tensegrity structure to have its shape and function. Um, it was selected for the finals for this award, but unfortunately I didn't win. But I've decided to play around a bit with my first tensegrity. And I, for example, I tried suspending uh, a pearl pet plastic can container with glass beads with from my tensegrity and dropped it from a two-story building and I was quite surprised to see that the glass didn't break and I thought that was pretty cool but I didn't really see much for the future but that changed uh, as the times changed and eventually resulted in our finished product. Okay, 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 Nadu. So uh, my next question is to Sanjula. So what motivated you to come up with this uh, tenskriti structure for airdropping uh, medical supplies? Yes, Sanjula, you can unmute. Hope the question is Sanjula, are you there? Hope she is facing some technical issues. Sanjula, am I audible to you? OK. 
Okay. I think Sanjula is having some technical glitch. Sanjula, am I audible to you? Yeah, now, now it's fine. Yeah, you've heard what I asked. Why no, no, no. Okay, okay. I, I'll repeat the question one more. What motivated you to come with, come up with this tensibility structure for air dropping medical supplies? You are on mute. You are on mute. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So what basically you know motivated is this mother's project for you know Rabdishitu for Raman Awards. Uh, and you remember the floods which happened in 2018 and 19. So it it left us with a great impact. Like our school was a, a, a camp for flood relief. And there we collected a lot of uh, necessary items like clothes, food and all. And yeah, that was, that was a really, really great impact, which, which gave us a motivation to you know do this project. And in 2019, uh, in our school, an aero club was started. Like, uh, and Gayatri Manikuti ma'am, Ashi sir, and Akshi sir were our mentors. And during the club meetings, we got, uh, you know, we got an opportunity to speak about Kerala floods. And from there, we learned that Amrita Vishwa Vidya Freedom had a 24 7 helpline. And they told us that uh, the medicines which, which were in most need was insulin. General. And if this, this, Insulin patient, not an insulin diabetes patient. Uh, if, if they didn't get insulin on time, they'll have many health issues. So we thought, okay, why not, you know, airdrop these medicines for your know, emergency supplies? Okay, okay, Sanjula, thank you. Uh, so next to uh, Vaisag, uh, how did you, how did the Aero Club in your school help in this project? Could you please explain a little more about this? So the Aero Club is an initiative that our school started. Uh, and Ashit Sir from Amadu Vishwa Vidya Bidam has helped us and a few other students from 9th, 11th standards and, uh, uh, to build fixed wing aircrafts and also to fly them. And well, the flying was the most interesting part. We really enjoyed it. And all three of us were the members of the Aero Club since its inception. And with the help of the mentors from the Aero Club, we were able to perform a series of tests to really uh, to really understand the limits of our tensibilities. And uh, starting from 25 meters and increasing it to a height up to 75 meters, we did a, did a series of drop tests on both, on both soft surface and on hard pavements. Uh, at the, on our first test, we tried it with two insulin vials, 10 injection needles, and one strip of 10 tablets. And in the next, we doubled our payload. And we were thrilled to know that not, in both of the tests, our payloads were completely intact. And yeah, that was such a really light up moment for us. And because of the Aero Club, we were able to showcase our work to Dr. Kuriakos who was the chief scientist of Kerala State Disaster Management Association, which, sorry, authority, KSDME. And he was able to give us insight on the challenges the first responders faced during disaster management situations. And this really helped us further improve our project. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Vaisha. So, uh, and next question is to you as a mentor, Gayatri ma'am. Yeah. What's the role of mentors in helping students coming up with this type of project innovation? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so I think uh, mentorship is a very unique process and it is very unlike any other experience that uh, one typically has. You know, there is a saying, it says, tell me and I'll forget. Show me and I may remember but involve me and I will understand. So you see, um, what a mentor does is a mentor gives time to the children, listens to the children, and tries to genuinely involve them in the learning process so that the children can really develop their skills. They build a relationship with the mentor. 
what happens in normally in schools is there is one teacher with 40 children and it is very difficult for the um, teacher to form a relationship with every child right because they have that much time and they have so many children to deal with unless the child takes the initiative it is very difficult but with a mentorship there is, it is a one-on-one -on -one thing there is a child or a team of two or three children and there is a mentor so the closeness that bondness is able to you know form so in uh, around 2016 actually uh, amma called me one day and uh, actually what happened was that i had taken a group of eight children and just out of my interest I started teaching them robotics and I, uh, uh, you know, made them participate in a competition. And then I went and told Amma, Amma, they did well at the state level, but uh, we didn't really do well in the national level. And then Amma is like, Mole, that is because you have to teach them over a year to their young children. You can't just give them like, 10 days, one, um, one month, and just take them to a competition. So it was really Amma who encouraged me to start teaching robotics and digital computing and physical computing to the children. And then around 2010, uh, I was selected by Atal Innovation Mission, uh, which is part of Niti Ayog. And they selected me as a mentor of change for Amrita Vidyalayam Pudyakavu and Amrita Vidyalayam Thalassery Schools. So for the last three, four years, I've uh, had the uh, pleasure to mentor over 150 teams or so in various different competitions and challenges. And each time they win, I think I win, you know, so I, can, I celebrate with them when they lose, I cry with them. It is, it is like they are part of me and we just, uh, it's a beautiful bond. So I would say that uh, one thing I've learned with mentorship is that it is a constant learning process. When we are working on problems, even on this problems, if you take, I, I, I tell you the children know about the tensegrities and how it works and the whole thing much better than me. They can start taking lessons for me, even though I was a mentor and I'm supposed to you know, guide them. What ends up happening is that at some point in time, the mentees become the mentor. So it is a constant learning process. So the mentors must have an open mind that they don't know uh, they don't know everything. They are not here uh, to just uh, teach anything, but to learn from the children as much as they're teaching. Also, the other thing is that the mentors must be open about their life experiences, which I think is very important because successes and failures are part of life. So we have to help the children understand that, yes, in some things we may succeed, in some things we don't. And if I can share my personal uh, life journey and say, oh, see, these are the times I succeeded and these are the times I failed, they also develop that openness to accept, okay, everything is the part of the journey. You, you win some, you lose some, but at the end of the day, we all learn. And uh, the last thing I'll say is that the mentor is somebody who will help the children uh, learn to think for themselves. So the mentor will ask open-ended questions. The mentor will encourage them to reflect upon whatever they're doing and why Why did something happen? So uh, it is, a, as I said, a, a discovery process, a learning process, but the learning is initiated by the children. They are doing some project and you ask them questions, you ask them uh, uh, you know, something and they want to find out more because it is their project and they want to be the experts in their project. So I, I think that uh, mentorship is a process of opening up the thinking of the children to develop a growth mindset. Uh, and it is a mutual learning process. So that's. Yes, ma'am. This type of mentorship is required for the students in this age. So that uh, like creative and other knowledge will increase more in the students. Yeah, so coming back to Madhu, yeah. What happened next? Could you please describe how the project evolved into the patent system? So uh, as Sanjula mentioned, um, 
it was only after the major floods in 2019 and 20 here in our state that we really started to think about how we could help, how we could do something for the people who are suffering. Because we were lucky enough to not be that badly affected, but we wanted to try and help. So we started discussing with our mentors how we could use some of our projects from Aero Club. And then I realized that my 10 security project could be used in this situation as well. So we had talked about uh, transporting payloads and how it's difficult to ensure their safety, as well as how difficult it is to ensure their um, they regain, they retain their structure or function upon being airdropped. And here, the usage of a tensor grenade to absorb shock from such a fall was born. Like that was, it seemed ideal. So we decided that we wanted to create tensor grenades, but if they were made out of things like plastic or rubber or whatever, it would just cause environmental pollution and like a significant quantity. So we decided to create it using fully biodegradable structures. Uh, we wanted, is our main goal at the time was to airdrop fragile medical payloads in, in particular, specifically medical, because that seemed to be the most urgent and like it could not wait. You can wait on food, you can wait a little bit on water, but you cannot wait for something that needs to be supplied urgently. And after some research, we decided on insulin because India, rather Kerala, is the diabetes capital of India. And it, there's like a humongous percentage of our population with it. So we decided that that would be a good place to start. Um, you can see this picture that I'm sharing. This yeah. is uh, one of the 10 securities that we've started. You can see here, it's made out of something called cane or rattan cane, which is leftovers from the jute cane, the cane industry, which is used for making furniture. And we also have jute strings, which, are, which while they are a product of their own, are fairly cheap when compared to other biodegradable materials that we have looked at. They're also incredibly strong, which is very helpful. Based on all the information Sanjula researched, we decided to work on the airdropping of insulin in such a structure. We packed the medicine in this one, I'll show the structure right here. Um, uh, one second. Yeah. So you can see the structure I'm holding up right here. This is the payload, the model of how we would drop. This would be tied inside a 10 security. So inside, we would wrap, first wrap the medicines in a newspaper to secure them before covering them in coir. The hoar would serve both as a absor shock absorbent property as well as an insulating property. Then when we open the package, we, the, uh, get the newspaper wrap layer, <coughs> we would have insulin vials, we would have pa packet, uh, pills and packages of that, as well as uh, one-time usage and disposable needles. We've done several tests with these and we found that our structure is very much capable of protecting these from a, a height. Um, another good purpose of the coir we've seen is that it has insulating properties. So insulin has to be kept at a certain temperature, uh, otherwise it will spoil. So this, uh, if packaged with something like an ice pack, can keep it warmer from, can keep it insulated rather. It can keep it cooler for much longer temperatures. We presented our first prototype in the NSO, which is a science competition or the National Science Olympiad in 2019 run by Amrita University. Here we won second prize, which was great. It, it was amazing. And it was such a motivation to move on. It was in the robotics category. Um, this was conducted in Etimare and it was a huge win for us. And that's what motivated us to keep, keep moving it forward. We also later wrote a research paper of our project and submitted it to FabLearn Asia 2020, which is a conference held in Thailand. And the three of us, we got accepted and got a chance to present our very first research paper in Thailand, and it was amazing. And with each presentation, we got feedback from experts from across the globe, which was mind blowing, because we got to meet so many great people who's like, their minds and the way they can think and the way they can express their ideas, like, it's almost magical. And uh, we could improve our designs, refine our ideas. It was super helpful. And all of this effort culminated in finally me creating a very modular structure for the Tensegrity. We've gone through like over 20 different designs. And finally, we've come up with one 
uh, or two structures, which we deemed as the best in terms of like amount of product used, easiest to create, easiest to unpack, easiest to deliver. It's the right size to mass ratio, all of those two testing. So, and we got the ideal size. And with this, we applied for a US patent, which was granted actually as two. So we got a bonus uh, as a main patent and then as a divisional patent in 2022. We also applied for an Indian patent, which is currently still pending. Yeah, so Madhu, I should appreciate all of you three for this wonderful uh, project and for your patent uh, and congratulations. Thank so you. yeah, coming back to Sanjala. Uh, so who was your inspiration for working on project uh, with this uh, societal impact? Yeah, so our inspiration is actually Amma, you know, like I think for all Amrita Vidyalayam students, it's Amma, Amma, it is Amma who's the inspiration, who gives us the inspiration. Like uh, she, for decades, she has been doing this, uh, she has been serving uh, the world community and all. So it's, it's basically that. And in our school also, we are taught, we are taught what Amma, you know, what Amma teaches. Like, uh, like we we not just taught how to use technology. Like with that, the gifts we need in life. Like the teachers, how they teach us, you know, not just the language of technology. They teach us how to how to use this technology to help people. How how to use this technology, how to use this technology to you know to give something to the humanity. And yeah, that's it. Okay, okay, Sanjula. And Vaisak, uh, what were what were the, some of the challenges you faced while developing this project? We faced a great deal of challenges. We had to learn completely new skills. We had to learn how to build the ten cities in a modular structure so that it can be assembled quickly. We had to we had to learn how to fly the drone, we, and we had to learn how to write the pay, how to write the research paper, and also to present our ideas in a clear and concise manner. While building the tensibility, we learned that the tensibility is made with jute strings, jute, uh, yeah, jute strings and cane sticks were actually very lightweight. And the jute strings are non-elastic. So the tensibilities can be made into a very solid structure. And since jute strings are non-elastic like rubber, the tensibilities had to be made in, in, a, in a great precision. We had to cut the jute strings to exactly the right length and the cut, cut the cane strings to exact cane sticks to exactly the right length so that the tensibility holds up its shape. And jute strings being natural, they tend to fray after a couple of uh, uses uh, after the drop tests. So uh, biodegradable tensibilities cannot be used for more than four to five times without rebuilding. And then we had the pandemic hit and it really hindered us from working together on this project. We couldn't pull in our ideas and work on experimenting them. And after our school reopened, we, we, we began with where we, where we stopped. And Madhu this year actually got an opportunity to present at the DIDAC India 2022 Ed Tech Expo in Bangalore International Convention Center. She also got to present our project in front of top uh, top officials of Atal Innovation Mission, which is under Niti Aayog in Puducherry. This gave us a lot of media publicity and we are really grateful for the interest this work has garnered. Okay, thank you, Aisha. Then uh, coming back to Gayatri, ma'am. So given your experience working with schools, uh, what can schools do to promote a culture of innovation? Um, so Vaisa just talked about some of the challenges that the children faced when they were doing this project, right? So one of the things that um, I, I think all children today, all the young children today, um, they are facing is this is a technology age, much more than when I was young and I had to learn technology. They are literally born into an age where the technology is really rapidly rising and it is just becoming ubiquitous, right? So now 
it is so important that the children develop mental flexibility to be able to embrace whatever challenge is given to them as an opportunity to innovate and use technology as a means to create something to make a change right so actually i was reading a book uh, by dr tony wagner from harvard and he had outlined uh, six critical skills or seven critical skills that all the children in the world today need to know right and uh, and most even the best schools in india uh, in the world do not really teach these skills as such right one is critical thinking and problem solving in the in terms of hands on learning um uh, in such kind of uh, you know socially relevant projects and things like that then uh, collaboration across networks in the sense that uh, you are having to partner with children who are not necessarily all in the same area but in different geographies or different locations you have to use like zoom meeting like what we are using now to be able to effectively communicate to be able to influence each other like that the third is agility and adaptability so things change today what is technology tomorrow isn't today for example we are dealing with currency notes tomorrow it will be bitcoins right we do not know what is there in store for us 10 years or 20 years from now so we need that agility and adaptability right then the fourth thing is initiative and enthusiasm uh, entrepreneurialism which means how can children think about Uh, becoming like a startup owner right so you you will be surprised that the number of uh, initiatives that are uh, you know coming up world over where um, if you even if you look at india right india has a very large demogra- demographic dividend which means the number of youth number of young people in india is very large now if everybody becomes a job seeker then who is there to provide jobs for all of them right so somebody has to be job providers and how do you become a job provider only by becoming an entrepreneur or a startup owner right so but the schools as such have not been structured the entire if you look at the cbsc curriculum or icsc curriculum or any curriculum entrepreneurship is not part of any syllabus in any school right so how will the children today survive if we just learn the skills you are who is going to give you the job you have to provide job for others nobody is giving you the job isn't it then the fifth uh, thing i will say is technical writing in terms of research article writing effective communication in terms of technical communication right so children need to learn how to convey their ideas how to present themselves not just in at a school level but like these children they had to present at an international level so you have to gear them up how to do public speaking at an international level right um the other thing is about how do you do research how do you look at data which is there online how do you collect them and assimilate information uh, for this particular like something innovative like this how do you do such kind of research right and the last thing i will say is um curiosity and imagination to find out why 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 is this happening if this is happening why only this way why not that way right so the thing is that it is not like the schools are not trying to provide the experience but the thing is schools have a curriculum to follow they have a syllabus to complete and it often leads less time to do explorations like this but today atal innovation mission is really um, encouraging schools to have atal tinkering labs which gives us the space for the children to work beyond the regular curriculum and have such open ended experiments and i would really like to call out on pudiyaka amrita vidyalayam pudiyaka school and amrita vidyalayam talaseri school to be one of the pioneers in kerala uh, among the kerala schools to have such a ecosystem for their school students right so the influence the vision that amma has for uh, all of amrita and for amrita vidyalayam schools is what really i think drives and motivates um, motivates the principals the teachers to embrace this and try to bring this so what 
really, you know, even the top schools around the world are struggling. Our schools are having already started making a progress towards it. So I think um, if we, if schools really want to set up a culture of innovation and entrepreneurship within their school ecosystem, it means that the schools must ask the children how to ask good questions, you know, socially relevant questions. How to understand that there is no really right or wrong answer. There are answers, but really there is nothing right or wrong. Try it and see. Maybe it will work, maybe it won't work. So it's just because something doesn't work doesn't mean anything. How do you look through large amount of information? And how do you say this is relevant, right? How do you figure that out? How do you make your own decisions? How do you say, this is the career path I want to follow based on, okay, I did this project. Wow, this was wildly successful. So many people want this. So many people are impacted. I am now going to become an entrepreneur who is championing this product or this idea, right? And then... Ma'am, you are not audible. They yeah. will be able to drive their passion into whatever they want, right? So I think that these are some things that are very essential for schools and our schools are really coming up and building. More and more Amrita Vidyalayams are actually coming into the fold that I am aware of um, with adult tinkering labs and initiatives like robotic labs and all that. So I, I think the vision that Amma has, if more and more schools adopt it and embrace it, I think we will really have a very vibrant uh, culture in schools. Uh, that's that's my impression of it. Okay, ma'am. So again, the question is to you, ma'am. You are the faculty and senior researcher from Amrita Lab, uh, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pedam. So in what all ways in, is Amrita Vidya, Vidya Vishwa Vidya Pedam supporting innovations in school? Okay, um, so... There are actually very many ways in which uh, Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam, uh, is supporting the Amrita school. So I am part of Amachi Labs. Amachi Labs is a computer human interaction research center. So, so Amachi is Amrita multimodal application and computer human interaction. That is the acronym. So we are basically a computer human interaction research center and our focus is on skill development. So when we were established in 2009, the idea was that we have a large number of uh, people who are living in the villages in India today, right? And Amma has time and again emphasized this fact that the villages are the soul of India. We don't want everybody to migrate from villages to the cities in search of better opportunities. We need to develop the infrastructure and the people in the villages. So how can we do that? We do that through skill development. If there are opportunities in the villages, if there are ways uh, where we can have better productivity in terms of agriculture, we can have lots of uh, small and micro enterprises in the uh, villages, we can have uh, a, a, an ecosystem which can support the culture. Right? We can even have systems where the villagers can provide, connect with uh, distributors in the cities. So they don't have to migrate, but they supply their produce. But for that, it means that the villagers must know entrepreneurship, must know how to, uh, what is uh, the state of, uh, you know, price of products and what is the market how to understand the dynamics of the market, what is important. So all this is part of skill development. She has actually originally started with skill development with the focus on women in villages because typically women don't migrate because they have their family in the villages, they stay in the villages. And when you start working with women in the villages, invariably children come along. Right? You can always say there is always a child with a mother. Right, It is always the case. So when you start empowering women, you start seeing there are curious children. They come and tag on their mother's pallu and sari and say they also want to learn something, even though they are tiny. They sometimes come and say, 
okay you are teaching this to my mother but how did you do this how did you create this you know so they are more curious about these things so that's why we started with uh, women empowerment as the focus of amachi labs through skill development and in the process also we started pulling in children we believe that the children are the um, the future of any nation and therefore developing children becomes a very essential part as much as skilling people today is of critical importance to india future skills are also very important to keep india in a competitive edge right otherwise we will not stay ahead so that is how um, it all started so a focus like um, a, a research center like uh, amachi labs is a huge asset uh, because of the focus on skill development now not only is there amachi labs there is amrita tbi so amrita technology business incubator what they do is they go to the schools and again provide uh, entrepreneurship training and innovation training and they actually fund startups they um, fund good ideas and provide them opportunities career pathways so that they can learn to bring up the uh, entrepreneurship ecosystem we also have uh, research centers like amrita create where they do a lot of support to the students in terms of academics so if they are having any kind of um you know any anything any support that they need in their academics also to look at various other means of learning creative ways of learning right so amrita create uh, pushes so they have this initiative that was done across amrita vishwavidyalaya pitam called um, virtual labs which what it means is that if students don't have access to laboratory equipments why is it that they can't learn can be do experiments on a computer in a virtual background a virtual uh, medium and can you learn through simulations so in the computer i have a beaker and i pour some uh, chemical and then i have another chemical and i can show the chemical reaction happening so the child is actually pouring a chemical a and a chemical b they can choose what they want to learn they can experiment with this so such kind of innovative initiative so currently amachi labs has another uh, very big funding project called skill e labs where what we are trying to do is to promote vocational education at school level so can you learn let's say motorcycle maintenance can you learn to repair your own bike why do you need to always say that somebody else has to come and do repair for me doing hands on work like that helps the children open up and have a broader appreciation for vocational skills because they are doing it they will have respect for other people who are doing vocational skills so i think that amrita uh, vishwavidyalaya pitam amrita university has a, a whole lot this is only the initiatives that i am telling from amritapuri campus um, we have like so many other campuses across india today uh, and big campuses like the most recent one being the faridabad campus that was um, inaugurated by the prime minister so the the opportunities are plenty and i think that the the focus and the drive and the vision that amma has set for amrita vishwavidyalaya pitam and amrita vidyalayam schools i think that that is really uh, you know um, some uh, gives us opportunities and makes us think about new ways where we can push innovation and entrepreneurship at school level and we are getting a lot of support from the government of india we are being part of the national mission as well so adult tinkering lab is a national mission so by partnering with the government working hand in hand with the government and having this culture where we want to do compassion driven research where we want to impact the people in the society i think uh, amrita is doing uh, a lot in this aspect yes ma'am you are really right uh, so coming back to sanjula how important is it for students like you to do such projects yeah so for students like us to get introduced to the world of 
I think Sanjala is facing some technical problem. Sanjala, your voice is breaking. And, and to look look beyond yeah. the walls of our, uh, yeah, right now it's fine. Yeah, you can continue. So did you did anybody hear what I said? Uh, no, actually you can continue one second. Okay. okay. Yeah. You can continue from the start. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's fine. So for the students like us to get introduced in, uh, to these projects, like to introduce to get introduced into the world of science, and technology, maths and art, it helps us to open our minds and to look beyond the walls of our classrooms. And, you know, we'll only understand the practical problems of building these kinds of scalable structures when we work on it. And yeah. Uh, and uh, like by doing such projects, we know you know what what we are capable of what all things that we can promote to a community like what all things we we can do for our country we know about it and it, we don't have to worry if our project is not a success because by doing such project it lays a back it lays a what what do you say it lays um like it helps us to improve into our personality and our confidence and you know, it helps us to improve our creativity and all. And uh, when we do such project, we get the opportunity to go to uh, different conferences and exhibitions where, where we'll see new people and their ideas. We'll, we'll get to interact with them and learn their ideas. And all these things, it will help us to improve our personality and, and, and our skills. So I really, really want a, a lot of other students, all of all of you know the innovative minds. I want them to do such things because it will help us. It will help us in a lot of you know in a lot of ways. Okay, thank you, Sanjula. And coming back to Vaisak, could you please share some advice uh, for youngsters? Um, I would say all. Uh, to all my fellow innovators that innovation is a long journey. Don't worry if your projects didn't work out the way you want them to. As Ma Madhumadi mentioned, it took us over 20 structures and countless uh, amount of troubleshooting to get to the product we have now. But it, the great amount of time was sped up by our good fortune of meeting with the uh, with the experts in experts in this field who were giving us valuable insights on our on our projects their feedbacks and the way we addressed them it really it was a developing stage for the whole project and we had wonderful mentors who were willing to help us uh, with the who were willing to work with us and we had encouraging parents to support us and we had enough free time to really work on our idea from and bringing it from paper to, uh, to the product we have right now. In reality, most of the projects are not as streamlined as ours has been. So accepting rejections and fixing errors are part of the process. So keep persisting with your ideas and surely success will be yours. Okay, thank you Vaisak. And coming back to Madhu. How can this project be taken forward or how you share your thoughts? Could you please share your thoughts on it? So the project was intended to distribute critical supplies to those stranded from their usual means of delivery, especially in the context of natural disasters. Our project focuses on the supply of insulin to disaster affected areas because, as I mentioned, diabetes is a severe problem here in Kerala. However, um, going beyond what we've built and tested, the 10 degree structure itself can be used to safely airdrop different kinds of materials, such as other types of medication, packets of food, water, and other resources. It may even have applications in defense and construction, which we have yet to explore. 
However, designing a prototype is straightforward, whereas manufacturing it to scale is an entire other situation. One design of the tensegrity is a simple, which can even a lay person who has never really used one with slight amount of training can mass produce easily. But others are very com complicated. They can take quite a bit of time to you know, put together, assemble, and get ready for deployment, even by a machine. Replicating our structures on a large scale needs a constant, uh, concentrate deployment strategy. And through the ATL lab or the adult tinkering lab in our school, and with the help, of course, with our mentors from Amrita Vishwa Vidya Pitam, we hope to make a societal impact with our invention and actually put it to use as a package delivery solution in emergency medical supplies. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Madhu. Uh, so coming back to uh, Gayatri Ma'am, how do you see the Amrita model of university school partnership, model of university school partnership developing into a best practice for empowering students in India through skill development? Um, so this uh, 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 Amrita's model of having university and school partnership is really Amma's vision. Uh, it is not like something I can uh, uh, give credit to anybody but Amma, because um, uh, to me, Amma is like an United Nations. You know, She thinks about so many different interventions. She starts so many different things in parallel. And it all seems like my goodness, why is Amma doing so many different things? But at, the, at, at some point in time, you see how they all connect with each other, how it makes perfect sense. So starting an university and having a school close to each other gives the opportunity in many ways. Like for example, our schools, our college, uh, Amrita University students have an opportunity to go to schools Uh, programs uh, where the students get an opportunity to volunteer at the school level. Therefore, they get to learn the, the, the things I told, talked to you about mentorship and the advantages of mentoring children. They get to mentor young children. Now they are in college. They get to be mentors. They get to be role models. They get to influence their life, which also makes them responsible because now there are young kids who are following their role model, right? So this, this kind of having a university and a school together, first, it gives opportunity for faculty like me to work with the school children, therefore develop them. So we don't have to only work when the students come at the college, when they are enrolled, but we are uh, working with them pre-university. So we are supporting them early on so that they can learn and they can start developing and having an open mind. The other thing, as I said, is having the opportunity for the college students, uh, the engineering students, uh, the social work students, uh, anybody who is interested in actually working on the ground to be able to work with young children and to be able to mentor them. Uh, then um, I had the opportunity to be outside India for uh, several years. And I have seen this model very, very successful and uh, highly effective outside India. But for some reason, I have not seen the structure anywhere else other than in Amrita. And that is why I, I, I completely attributed to Amma's vision. Amma knew that building such an ecosystem where you can have a partnership between the university and the school is a win-win both for the university and the school. And just imagine, young students like them, right? They have, they are already inventors. They are already innovators. If we just, you just wait and see where they are going to go. They are going to go to great heights. So it is, it is that they are carrying the Amrita brand. They're carrying the Amrita name. And this kind of an intervention, even in fact, I would say the very effort that you are doing right now uh, encouraging, giving a platform for the children to, you know, have a program like My School, My Pride, where you are encouraging children to come talk about their projects, discuss their experiences. 
isn't this itself a unique opportunity, right? This is also a kind of a, a university encouraging school students. It's a university school partnership. And I am I, I am very proud of the fact. I think Amrita is the only university which is actively pushing this kind of um, partnership model, primarily driven by Amma's vision. And I think that this is the best practice uh, when I had an opportunity to meet, uh, go to Niti Ayo and uh, talk to the um, uh, mission director, uh, Dr. Chintan Vaishnav, and also to uh, meet the Niti Ayo CEO, uh, Dr., uh, Mr. Parameshwaran, I was telling them about this. I think this should be replicated everywhere and we should have such partnership model so that um, it is it is a learning process there will be rough uh, we are all like you know stones when we come together there are you know rubbing that is happening and smoothening that needs to happen but eventually we will come as shiny stones we will uh, benefit from this so i think that um, this is a model that should be replicated and i as i was saying uh, there are many many initiatives at amrita uh, that is being uh, done to develop children at a young level and if more and more colleges adopt it go beyond the university go beyond the campus and think more uh, you know more openly um, in fact i would say go to the villages and start from the rural schools and start working with the people in the rural schools just like how amachi labs is doing i think that there is so much to learn so much to grow and this partnership will um, will uh, be something that will be uh, uh, a really a, uh, will change the face of india will really bring an innovation and enthusiasm in india that probably we are little bit lacking in terms of our education system it will invigorate the education system uh, that we have and really push it uh, to really great heights. So I think, I very much think this is a best practice and uh, I think it should be replicated more uh, to see the effectiveness of it, to prove it as really a method. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Actually, it's really an honor for me to meet, uh, meet all of you today. And uh, congratulations one, once again, all of you for this wonderful achievement. So I, from your words itself, I can understand that you work really hard to achieve this. So hope you'll do something more innovative idea in next uh, like coming years or like that. So thank you once again. Uh, thank you all for joining us today. And thank you all for watching us. And we'll come up with the next, next episode. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.